first for breaking news and the best live sport. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Yes, thank you very much, Stephen. It's 12 o'clock. I'm Dominic Laurie in for Sheila Fogarty again on 5 Live. Baroness Thatcher's funeral will be held next Wednesday and will be the first ceremonial funeral since the Queen Mother's. She changed the face of Great Britain. She gave us something to be proud of. And I know there'll be people who will disagree with that. But the fact was, wherever she went, she was revered, feared. And if you didn't like her, you still respected her because of the way she conducted it. That's the Falklands war veteran Simon Weston, who agrees with the decision the former Prime Minister should also get full military honours. I want your comments on three areas of Margaret Thatcher's legacy. Opportunities for women, Northern Ireland, and the after-effects of the economic financial big bang and deregulation that she implemented. Text us on 85058. Also this lunchtime and other news. Should criminals pay for the cost of running courts out of their future earnings? It's been suggested by the Justice Minister Chris Grayling. Good afternoon, I'm Will Perry with the sport. After eight years at Goodison Park, Everton's captain Phil Neville has confirmed he's leaving the club at the end of the season. Also, do you get scared by turbulence when you take a flight? I'm one of those people that when it goes bump, I'm gripping the seat in front of me out of fear. A new report says if you fly across the Atlantic, it's going to get worse and more frequent over the next few years. Your turbulence tails, please. Text me on 85058. Don't forget, you can watch the programme as it goes out on the Five Live website. And also another an interesting side effect of climate change that I hadn't registered before today. It might make flights bumpier. And if you're like me, scarier. I've never liked a bumpy, turbulent flight. Even though I worked for an airline for three years, it didn't make any difference. In fact, it made it worse. Anyway, Dominic Laurie standing in for Sheila Fogarty today between 12 and 2. We're talking later on this hour about turbulence because there are some, uh, some scientists reckon that climate change means that transatlantic flights will become more turbulent more often. Um, Asking for your text messages, this is a good one. Rob says, Hi Dom, I went to the US a few years ago into Newark Airport. It was horrendous. The plane crashed and banged so badly on the way down. All the overhead compartments started to break open. Stuff was flying all over the place. I was throwing up. It felt like it was going to crash. The cabin crew was saying, Well, this is fun. Never, never again. I will walk next time, Rob. I think that would take you an awfully long time, but I share your sentiment. Good stuff. Uh, nervous flyers might want to turn down their radios now. Climate change could mean that flights between here and the USA could get a lot bumpier in the future. Researchers at the University of Reading say the increasing amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is changing the air currents along transatlantic flight paths, which means we could be in for a more turbulent plane journey. Uh, Dr. Paul Williams is from the University of Reading. Um, Dr. Williams, I, I don't like turbulence, even though I used to work for an airline. The more I worked for the airline, the more I hated turbulence, even though the more flights I took. So you might have to do some reassuring. <laughs> Tell us what turbulence is. It's always, it's always good to understand when you have a slight phobia, what you are dealing with. What is turbulence? It's simply uh, uh, relatively intense currents of air blowing uh, either from up to down or from down to up and they exert a force on the uh, wings of the plane, and that buffets it up and down a bit. But I should, I should reassure you, really, because it is rare. Only 1% of the atmosphere over the Atlantic Ocean uh, contains turbulence any one time. So 99% of the atmosphere is perfectly smooth. Now, um, a man who works on my programme who has an unhealthy interest in turbulence just tried to describe it to me before the programme as, don't worry, it's like going on ripples on water. You don't kind of drop through anything. But when, it, when you're in it, you feel like you are dropping through something and therefore that there's some sort of loss of control. Is, is, mm. is, is that not true? Is there no loss of control from the aircraft? It is true that you are moving up and down, perhaps tens of feet in, in short space. Tens of, of feet? Is that all it is? It, seem, uh, it, seems, think... it seems a lot more when it happens. Yes. So, I mean, for extreme turbulence, which is... You know, the more and more extreme the turbulence, the rarer and rarer it gets. But there is extreme turbulence, which, which will move, cause the plane to move up and down through, I think, perhaps 100 feet or so. But it really is very mm. rare. And, um, um, yeah. Why, why would climate change, let's move on to what, you know, what we're talking about today. Why would climate change create more turbulence? Well, it's surprising, isn't it? Because when we think about climate change, we think about the fact that it's getting warmer down here at the bottom of the atmosphere where we live. But what is also the case is that climate change is changing the basic state of the atmosphere uh, 10 kilometers above our heads where planes fly. And in particular, what is happening is that the 
jet stream wind speeds are increasing and moving around further towards the pole, the North Pole on average. And this increase in wind speeds is making the atmosphere more susceptible to the instability that generates turbulence. Got a text from John in Glasgow. Hello, we boarded a flight from LA to Denver and the flight was the most frightening experience as the turbulence was the worst ever. People screamed, some prayed, others were sick, some luggage fell from the cabin lockers. Interestingly, the cabin crew kept quiet as it felt as if every bolt, nut and rivet was coming loose with the vibrations. A real state of powerlessness and despair. And I, I totally uh, can appreciate that, that, that John from Glasgow's feelings there. Do... Do flight crews have to, if, 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 if flight crews have to deal with more turbulence, do they, would they have to retrain? Would they have to learn more how they communicate with us, how to fly through it? I think they're already really quite good, actually, at, at remaining calm when it feels like the plane's about to drop out of the sky. And, and passengers who watch air crew remaining calm, I think, learn from the air crew that they experience it all the time, and it's not a great risk. There are, there have been times when an engine has dropped off the plane mid-flight mm. um, and even then it managed to land safely. But Which has nothing like, to do with turbulence. Yes, that was caused by turbulence. Oh. Um, turbulence caused the engine to snap off. Now, this, this happens almost never, oh. but it's just an example of how extreme it can be. Oh, oh, Dr Williams, I wanted to end the interview with a sort of don't worry, it's all all right, but you rather spoiled that by saying an engine can drop off because of turbulence. Let's hope it doesn't happen too often. Richard's up next.